Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to show you the wheel settings I think are best for F1 2022 with the Logitech G920, G29 and G923 wheelbases. Okay, so to access the wheel settings from the main menu, under the home tab you're going to want to scroll down to game options, select that, then select settings, and then select controls, vibration and force feedback. Because I've already edited my wheel settings before, I already have a custom control scheme made. If you don't, you'll have to select the Logitech G920 or whatever other Logitech wheel you might be using, edit the settings on that, and you'll be able to save it as a custom control scheme after that. From there, select your wheel settings and press edit, and then select calibration. Steering dead zone is the amount you have to move your wheel before the game registers any input. Personally, I want my wheel to be as responsive as possible, so I always leave this setting at zero. Steering linearity makes it so that your wheel is much less sensitive when it's closer to its neutral position than when you're at a high degree of rotation in either direction. Personally, I prefer the force required to steer to be equal and linear no matter what steering angle I'm at, so I leave this at zero as well. Steering saturation makes your steering more sensitive and I'd only generally recommend changing it if even when you're physically turning your steering wheel to full lock, in real life you still aren't hitting full lock in the game. Throttle dead zone signifies the amount you have to press your throttle pedal for there to be any movement registered in game. This is usually best left at zero to give you a more broad range of throttle input to use and I'd only recommend changing it if you have a sticky throttle pedal that is never fully at zero percent input. Throttle linearity and throttle saturation are best left at zero in my opinion as a one to one input is optimal for your throttle. Brake dead zone is the amount the brake pedal has to be depressed before registering any input in game. I have this set at 3 as sometimes when I have my foot hovering over the brake pedal I inadvertently press it a very small amount so having this set at 3 means that this unwanted input isn't registered in game. Brake linearity makes it so the more you press your brake pedal the more sensitive it gets so having this on a high value kind of makes it more like an exponential input. I prefer this once again being more like a 1 to 1 feeling as I think that this makes you learn the, the feeling of the brake pedal and get used to it much easier so once again I leave this at zero. Now while I'm still using my Logitech wheel I have switched over to Fanatec pedals so I'm not sure that I can give the best advice on the pedals when it comes to the brakes. What I would recommend if you're not a fan of the amount of force that it takes to depress the brake pedal on the Logitech pedals is to turn up the brake saturation a little bit so that it makes it so that if you say bring your brake saturation up to 30 that means that in real life you only actually have to press your brake pedal to 70% to be at 100% braking in the game so this can make it a lot easier for you if you're having trouble generating that force required to depress that brake pedal. Now many people love the stiffness of the brake pedal especially for Formula 1 racing. If you're one of these then leave the brake saturation at zero. Okay so now we're finished making changes in there and we can exit out of that. Now we're going to press vibration and force feedback and first and foremost we want vibration and force feedback on. Your vibration and force feedback strength slider is pretty much your master slider and controls the strength of all force feedback and vibration effects. I like this set at 105 as it gives a fairly strong feeling of force feedback but it also doesn't make it feel like you're battling the wheel when you're negotiating multiple corners in sequence. On track effects controls how much you feel stuff like bumps and marbles on the track. I prefer this to be set to zero. Rumble strip effects is how much vibration you feel when you mount a rumble strip, apex or curb or whatever you want to call it in game. I prefer this set to zero as I find when this is on, especially at a high value, when you mount an apex the vibrations through the steering wheel can slightly alter your capability to position your wheel as precisely as you could when there's no vibrations through your wheel. Off track effects determines the force feedback strength of stuff off track like grass and stones and stuff like that. This effect definitely matters the least out of any on this list here as hopefully we're spending most of our time on the track and not off it. Wheel damper is potentially the most important one on this list as it determines how much of the forces through the tires you feel through the steering wheel. This one we want pretty high to give us the best chance to feel when we exceed the limit of our tires grip and therefore I have this set to 85. Understeer Enhance does exactly what it says on the tin and enhances the feeling of understeer in the car. 
I find this quite helpful as it does make a bit of a difference and I turn it on. Your maximum wheel rotation then is the amount of degrees you have to turn your wheel to get from lock to lock. A quite generally recommended range of rotation for this is usually between 280 and 360 degrees and this is one of those settings that I could really go either way on to be honest. A lower setting can be especially useful for trying to navigate tight chicanes quickly as you won't have to be quite as quick with turning from lock to lock whereas a higher value towards 360 can feel a little more stable. Right now I'm using 360 but I certainly wouldn't be opposed to maybe dropping that slightly in the future. Anyway guys that's the end of my F1 2022 Logitech wheel settings tutorial. Remember that wheel settings can be a very personal preference and it can take some experimentation to find exactly what suits you. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please like and subscribe as it really helps me out. And comment down below if you fine tuned any of the settings to suit your driving style better, as you could potentially help someone out with your tweaks also. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.